All right, guys. Our next guest is a story of determination and never giving up. We last saw him smashing his way to becoming the UFC light heavyweight champion at UFC 253 when he defeated Dominic Reyes, the Prince of Cheshire, the new king of the UFC light heavyweight division, Broly himself, Jan Blahovic. Welcome to Submission Radio. How are you, man? I'm good. Thank you. And how are you? Very good. And you're joining us from your parents' house. We appreciate the time. Um, we got to ask you, man, it's been such a long journey for, to the title. It's all happening right now, but how has life been for you this past week being back in Poland? <laughs> it's amazing. You know, life is great right now. You know, everything what's happened in my life right now, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, uh, when I just landing in, in, in Warsaw, uh, I just cannot believe how people, you know, react for this, what's happened. You know, they... They're so happy. I make her proud my, my my whole country. You know, it's it's amazing. Also for me, uh, <laughs> I still not cannot believe what what was happening. You know. I mean, you yeah. At the airport, you really got the the king's welcome, uh, and then you met the prime minister. What what was that like? And were you the first MMA yeah. fighter ever to meet the prime minister? Yeah, I was the first one. <laughs> yeah, that was nice nice meeting. You know, we we don't talk about politics. We only talk about the sport, about MMA. And you know he, I think he he he's a fan of MMA. You know, uh, we talked 50 minutes. It was really good conversation, uh, really nice. He got a lot of uh, good question, so I, I we enjoy it this this meeting. I think the only thing that makes sense at this point is for the prime minister to at least name a street or a town after you. Has, what where are we at that? Is there going to be a Jan Blachowicz city, Jan Blachowicz street, <laughs> Jan Blachowicz school so, at least? <laughs> they put some my name uh, on something on somewhere. <laughs> we will see. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and better for me. <laughs> and now the prime minister is yeah. going to start start touching the the famous noose in the forest from now on. I want I want to talk about obviously I think they, they 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 try to find you know this. <laughs> they try try to touch it. <laughs> well, yeah. What what if you go back next time and then there's like all these people trying to touch the noose and you're like, hey, I got a fight coming up. I got to touch the noose as well. <laughs> but you know, uh, this is my place. I don't uh, you know no nobody knows where is it. So, but I think I have to take this 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 rope with me to to the home <laughs> for you know. Because you don't know, maybe they they found it at the place and take it. <laughs> do, do you think you yeah. will? I know you were hesitant to in the past. Do you think you might take the rope from now on? Yeah, I, I think I will. Uh, because you know, uh, now when you know everybody knows about that, <laughs> so I need to protect my you know my secret. Uh, uh, you know, lucky thing. <laughs> yeah, with coronavirus out there, you don't want all these people touching your lucky noose. That's silly. <laughs> you gotta make sure you keep it to yourself. Let's talk about your story, man, because it's a real story of perseverance. Uh, despite the adversity and the injuries in your career, you never stopped believing. Um, when in your career did you first believe that you would become the UFC champion? You know, uh, in the moment when I signed contract with UFC, that was the the... Then I knew that okay, this is uh, something new in my life, uh, something what I you know want to do all my life, and now I've got opportunity to, to be the best in the world. Couple more, few more steps, and maybe I will be. So, in this moment when I signed contract, mm. that was the first. Yeah. Mm. You you obviously went through like some of the the adversity like in the UFC. You know, you had some good wins, and then you sort of had a few losses. What was it that sort of kept you believing in yourself and kept you sort of on the right track? You know, and and th the way that that belief just never really wavered. You know, because I think I'm not the person who you know after when I lose to fight, uh, and I, I I I'm not hiding under the bed and crying. You know, mm -hmm. I just have to find in my you know I have to find. What goes wrong, you know, and why? Because I always believe that I've got skills to to beat everybody, to be the best. But I don't know what was, uh, why I do mistake. But I find that uh, this mistake, uh, I connect connect the dot really good, you know, and and finally uh, just back to the root, do what I do before I sign contract when I won almost everything. Uh, and here I am, the best in the world. So that was, you know, good, <laughs> uh, good decisions after mm. bad decisions. <laughs> I mean, people talk about the legendary Polish power, but when did you first discover your punching ability? Was it as a pro fighter or 
Did you even get in a few street fights along the way? <laughs> I, I think, yeah, maybe. I start to believe uh, the, in the my legendary Polish power, I don't know, uh, a couple of years ago. But I think I have uh, all my life inside me. But I just, you know, discovered uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, but I use it, yeah, on the street also a couple of times. <laughs> Really, <laughs> but we we lo we love we love hearing street fights from like UFC fighters, MMA fighters back in the day, back in the day b b before it. Uh, we, we I was a, I was a bouncer, you know, so I got fused. And also in the in the school when I was you know kid, so then then the we have small league in our school, you know. Now <laughs> now I understand that was our first MMA fighting was in the in the school, you know. We always do. Uh, something like this in <laughs> yeah every every day that was uh, fighting in in our school someone you know fight against someone because everybody wants to be the best in 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 in, in the school <laughs> people are trying to fight you in the school no way not not the champ uh, uh, yeah in the school always <laughs> <laughs> always what's what's a, what's a sort of funny story from your bouncer days of when somebody tasted le the legendary polish power and uh, didn't know what they were running into you know, maybe this is not a funny story, but one time, uh, you know, we uh, we have uh, we work was just three of us work on the on the uh, on the club, and we have fight against uh, two empty guys, you know. Oh. Uh, and of course, we lost the fight you know, because it was too many of them. Uh, they just completely destroyed the club and us. <laughs> but also, that was uh, you know uh, good uh, experience. <laughs> for the future. Wait, wait, wait. So, so who won the fight? Are you saying that they got you guys and it was a good experience? Yeah, because now we, after this, we know what to expect. Uh -huh. You know, so we was uh, uh, from this moment we was uh, prepared for 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 stuff like this and uh, never happened again. So, <laughs> uh, but the the the, the 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 in that night was you know, uh, bad bad night for us. But anyway. Now, when I look to the past, was you know, was funny. <laughs> Can I tell you something? I think this is the championship mentality showing its head yet again. Mm. Usually, a guy fights twenty guys as a bouncer and goes, "Man, that wasn't the best time." But you even you were even positive after the street fight. So that there is no there is no stopping you, young Blackwitz. You were always on the way to your championship your whole entire life. Let me ask you this though: when you when you throw that punch and you land with that Polish power. Does it feel differently to you? I know I've sp we've spoken to a lot of fighters. They say when they land that knockout shot, it just feels a little bit different. They just know that they've landed it. It just feels different to the normal punches that they hit people with. Does it feel different when you land the Polish power on people? You know, they feel different. My opponents, they feel different. I feel normal, you know. I feel <laughs> I, I feel pleasure. <laughs> but they feel no pain uh, or, or nothing because they go to sleep. So... <laughs> Ask them, not me. I feel, you know, pleasure. Then I can punch them that, and knock them out. I don't think we could have expected a better a response, man. That's just perfect. Um, I, well, I guess what's fascinating to me about you, man, is like you're, you're a humble guy. You come from Poland, you know. You come from uh, the hometown of Cieszyn, which is pretty small. It's mainly known for Żywiec beer uh, and the, the Żywiec beer brewery. Well, what was it like growing up there, man? How would you sort of describe the town and, you know, the, the people usually coming out of there? I don't, I don't suspect... It, you know, you get a lot of celebrities or people that come out and become UFC champion from Cheshire. Yeah, you no know, small city on the south of Poland with the border with Czech Republic. So also we have few, you know, <laughs> nice fight against, uh, you know, Czech people. Mm. <laughs> but now we are friends, you know. Now, uh, now it's different, different times. Been uh, long time ago we fight against together. Now we are friends. <laughs> You know, everything is changed, but yeah, the life was here really good. You know, I, I enjoy it. I al always like to come back here and visit my friends, family, and you know, just remember what's happened uh, here before in my past. But it's it, it's the same, you know, like in Vegas, what's happened in Cheshire, stay in Cheshire, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, curi I'm curious, man, did you always want to be a fighter or what did you want to do in life when you were growing up? Did you have any other goals? Take us through it. Uh, you know, I was, uh, yeah, when I was, I started training when I was uh, nine years old, yeah, so uh, from judo, I started training, so I, my sport is, in my life, was always, but I was, uh, I really want to go to, to military, I would like to be a soldier, but when I was uh, in 18 years, 
uh, I have to uh, I changed my mind because I won my first uh, Jiu Jitsu competition and that was uh, you know uh, something like okay I don't want to be in military anymore mm-hmm. now I'm gonna be a sportsman you know next to if I think if I will lose this uh, Jiu Jitsu competition then I will go to military and now I yeah. will be I don't know I'm in the you know with the AK-47 <laughs> you know, field and you know fight against someone <laughs> yeah well you probably wouldn't be meeting the the prime minister on, on TV if you're in the military um, I know like I know like my parents obviously like you know with my Polish background they talk about like sort of the communist era and like my dad's like oh man I used to have to line up for bread and milk for like five hours in the cold and this and that uh, you know it, it always fascinates me like if you had to do something like that now you're the champion did you have to do that did you ever like when you were a kid do you remember like lining up or anything or you, or you were past that mm. point I was I I live in this time but I was too young to to remember that you know only what my mom tells me you know I just remember that uh, I've got this is what I remember from this time that uh, my father bring uh, uh, every week we've got uh, one bottle of coke you know wow uh, he take it from somewhere you know and only one bottle bar by week and that was something we with my brother we waiting for for this day you know ah today our father would bring us coke yeah <laughs> and that was you know like ah we're celebrating this, this day <laughs> is, is there something now that you kind of uh that you sort of you know like to i don't know get or buy or something that you get for your family that you know back in the day was really scarce like you know like a coke that you would get one of and now you kind of get it all the time and you're like oh man life is so good life is so different you know i can, I can buy stuff for my family that they didn't have back in the day you know, yeah, but right now my parents, they've got good life, you know, they've got everything what they want. I just, you know, give car to my brother. <laughs> uh, Ooh, what or, kind of car? What kind of car? Uh, not some, not, not like expensive, it's Nissan Qashqai. Nice. Not, not, not. Uh, you should not, have lied, you should have said Lamborghini. Nobody <laughs> <would have. laughs> I was going to say, man, um, obviously a great time right now for the champ. And we're looking at the light heavyweight division. And I mean, getting a King, King's welcome as you return to the airport is unbelievable. But we have to ask you, man, when you look at this landscape and the division, you've got so many options. You've got guys like Tiago Santos, there's Glover Teixeira. Then there's John Jones and Israel Adesanya. And we've got to ask, what's next for you, King? For me, the best will be John Jones. But I think this is not real. It is not going to happen. Uh, so the, I think that my next opponent is going to be, you know, winner against uh, Texterra and Thiago. But also, like you say, Adesanya also is really good. So we will see. But we have to wait a little bit. But... For me personally, the best will be John Jones. You know, he promised me this fight after when I knock out a Corey, and I'm waiting for him. You know, I believe in future that I catch him somewhere, <laughs> someday, anywhere. Mm. You mentioned that that's the best fight, but you don't you don't believe that it's going to happen. Why do you think he's not willing to fight you right now? You know, you see what I do, what I did with uh, Dominic. You know, I, and he just do really good. You know. He just escaped because he don't want to lose against me, you know. I understand that. He is afraid and he go to, you know, to, to, to heavyweight. Do you feel, what, what is it about the, the, the John Jones fights that is such a big allure for you? Do you feel like you need that fight? Do you feel like you need him, need to beat him to prove anything? Because, you know, as it stands, you've already got the belt. Yeah, I've got the belt, but, I, you know, I just, I just want to beat, beat, beat him, you know. Because, uh, you know, he never lost, just one lose, but that was, you know, yeah, some disqualification, so it uh, uh, doesn't count. So I won't beat this one who, who beat him in, in 205, 205 division. Mm. People are saying that his, him going to the heavyweight division is because he believes that the competition was getting a bit tough at light heavyweight. You know, he had a tough fight against Thiago Santos. He had a tough fight against Dominic Cruz. And people believe that he wanted to try and make a bit more money and possibly have easier matchups in the heavyweight division. Do you think that's the reason why he switched divisions, or do you think he's just trying to test himself up there? No, he you know he just want to escape from you know against the legendary Polish power. That's why he go to to heavyweight. He afraid the legendary Polish power. This is the answer. 
Well, let me ask you this, Jan. You've got Israel Adesanya saying that he might come up to 205 and he wants to claim that belt. What did you make of that? <laughs> he can try. <laughs> but he's going to back to, you know, to his division really fast if he if he's going to do this and when he, and when he meet me, you know. Well, it's going to be the same like, uh, I guess, uh, Rocco. I'm I'm curious. Why why do you think that fight would be similar to the Rockhold fight? Looking at the way that Israel fights. No, everybody thinks that uh, uh, because when how to say it? Mm, uh, everybody thinks they they know me. You know, they think that uh, I'm you know easy easy fighter. You know, uh, but when uh, when cage when the octagon door are cl- are closed. Uh, they feel my power, you know. I'm a completely different fighter. They never fight against someone like me, uh, but they have to. I think they have to feel it <laughs> on uh, on on their skin, you know, because uh, and and this is this is the the, the 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 most simple answer. They just think they they knew me, but they never fight against someone like me in the in the gym, in the sparrings, and in the fight. Mm. What, I guess that's that's sort of the whole thing about, you know, when the fight finally happens, you know, we can sort of find out all those answers. I'm just wondering, you know, at the same press conference when you won the light heavyweight belt, you know, Israel was saying that he's the best 205 pounder in in the world. What did you make of that? Yeah, you know, you you know, we've got, uh, there is a UFC game yeah, on PlayStation. Mm-hmm. So if he choose me in this game, then he's going to be the best in 205 division. But... <laughs> Not in real life. No way. What do you think of this rivalry between him and John Jones? It, it kind of looks like they're nonstop just messaging each other, tweeting each other. What What do you think of it? And do you, is there a point where you kind of get sick of watching it happen? Or is it is it entertaining for you to see? I, I, I don't know, you know. I'm just, not, right now my focus on me, you know, on my person, and I, about my next fight, not about uh, about them, you know. If they make this fight, okay, I will watch it and we will see what's gonna happen. But uh, it's you know it's depend about uh, what UFC uh, we what to, what to do. I I I I'm waiting for you know for my next opponent. I don't uh, think about you know what John Jones gonna do or Adesanya gonna do. If they want to fight against me, I'm gonna be ready for for John Jones or Adesanya or Thiago or Glover. Doesn't matter. Is there a part of you that uh, hopes John Jones, in a weird way, stays undefeated before you fight him, so you could be the first guy to beat him, or is it a situation where you don't really really care what happens you to know, him? We will see because I think that he afraid me, and maybe I will never fight against him <laughs> because he will he don't agree uh, for this fight. So I don't know, but uh, that will be nice to to be the first one who beat him. Mm. Who, do, who do you think sort of presents the, the toughest challenge for you? If you're looking at, say, Glover, Tiago Santos, John Jones, and Israel Adesanya, which of those guys is the toughest test for you? I think uh, uh, I can beat all of them, but uh, I think the, the, the rematch against uh, Tiago will be, you know, uh, the most uh, tougher for me. It's interesting as well because a man by the name of Anthony Johnson is apparently on his way back to the UFC as well. Um, what would you think about a matchup with a guy like him? And is, is he someone that you look forward to sort of, uh, I suppose, greeting back to the UFC when he eventually makes his return? Yeah, we'll see, you know, because he have a long break. So we'll see how he's going to look in his first fight. Uh, and in the future, who knows? <laughs> mm. It's it's also one of the options. I, I should do a fight against uh, uh, Antony uh, Twice, you know, <laughs> never happened. So, you know, maybe on the one more try and the fight will make it. Uh, we will see. Mm. Oh, it'd be awesome if we finally got to see that fight. I'm just wondering, with Thiago, you guys... First of all, you know, we need to back to, to Octagon, do a couple of fights, and we'll see yeah. how he's going to look. Yeah, a- absolutely. I was going to say... Um... Uh, with Thiago, you guys sort of trained together afterwards, after you guys fought. Have you stayed in contact? Um, I wonder if you guys are friends. Would it be weird in any way if you guys fought uh, fought the second time? For me, no. You know, I, in, in past, I, I fight against uh, friends, you know. I fight against uh, my friend with I trained to one tournament, you know. <laughs> uh, and for me, it's a, it's, it's a normal thing. In, inside the cage, inside the octagon, 
we are you know fighters we are sportsmen but uh, so i can knock him out i, I want to knock him out uh, but after the fight uh, i can go and drink beer with him so for me it's not a problem i will never drink beer with rock all yet because he is you know asshole but uh, tiago is normal <laughs> we are friends so we just do best in in, in octagon and after that uh, we can train together and you know live normal like a friend do you see yourself having a beer with Israel Adesanya if, if hypothetically the two of you guys fought? I know he loves to throw out the memes. He loves to sort of have fun with his opponents. If that fight happened, did you see yourself having a beer with him afterwards? Uh, it's yeah. This is question for for him. We will see if you know uh, if UFC gonna will make this fight happen. We will see how he gonna what he gonna do. Or what he gonna talk to me, <laughs> and after this I can uh, you know answer. Right now, I cannot answer. I got one more. more. I no, I, absolutely. I've got one more on Israel just because he's looked so, you know, he's obviously undefeated. No one's really done a whole lot to him. I'm just wondering, from your perspective, when you look at your style, what sort of problems do you think you pose for him? Uh, you know, because in 205, it's uh, even when you train in the, in the gym with the bigger guys, it's training. It's completely different. When you go... When you change your the, the division and you go, he go to 205, he's gonna feel different power, different cardio, uh, different timing. Everything is different, you know? Uh, and that that's gonna be the most uh, hard and uh, new for him. Mm. And that's I, gonna be something what I, you know, do all my life. I'm all my life in 205, so it's normal for me. And for him, that's gonna be, uh, you know, something what, uh, uh, what's gonna be confused for him. I know it's been a long a long time since your heavyweight days at KSW, but do you see a scenario in which you would see yourself sort of meeting him at heavyweight or even fighting John Jones at heavyweight or even moving up to heavyweight and possibly trying to become the champ champ once things, you know, stabilize in your division and you've had a few title defenses? Maybe in future. I think in future, for sure, I'm going to fight in heavyweight. Uh, but right now I'm focused only about, you know, uh, two or five, then uh, they fed a couple of times the, the, the belt. Uh, but in future, uh, I, I, I think uh, for sure I'm going to be a uh, heavyweight fighter. All right. Well, we'll let you go, Jan. We don't want to take up your entire night. The last final thing from me is we're asking everybody this. Obviously, Khabib versus Justin Gaethje is coming up around the corner, a fight that we're very excited for, especially here in Australia. I'm just wondering, from your perspective as the champion, if you had to sort of give a prediction or see how that fight goes down, you know, Justin Gaethje's leg kicks, uh, Khabib's wrestling, how do you see that fight playing out, Jan? Uh, you know, Khabib. Khabib going to win this fight uh, second or third round. Uh, ground, ground and pound or, or, or submission. This is what I see when uh, when I, you know, think about this fight. Well, there you guys go. I was going to say, the man deserves a city named after him, schools, statues, and, and the list goes <laughs> on. But for now, he is the UFC champion. We're excited to see what happens next for Jan. Thank you so much for joining us on Submission Radio. Of course, follow him on social media and see what happens next at Jan Blackwitz. He uh, always speaks his mind. A very entertaining follower if you haven't followed him yet. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Pleasure for me. See you in future.